my name's Frank. I'm the owner here at Union Heights in Windsor, Melbourne, Australia. This area of Windsor has had really strong tradition with graffiti art um, since the early 80s. There have been a lot of crews based here, you know, young kids that lived in the commission flats in housing that, you know, just because of the nature of graffiti, you start on your corner and you just spread. So there's been a strong, strong graffiti art community on the south side of the city, Paran, Windsor, St Kilda. No, that's not true. It, legal graffiti only exists when you have permission off the building owner. So, you know, unfortunately we can't go now and just find a corner and go paint a wall. We have to get permission off the, off the owner still. It depends on the local council. Some local councils are now turning around saying, if I own a building and it's not heritage listed, I can't just paint that building with graffiti on it or, or street art as they like to call it. You have to get permission first, which I find really strange. I find that really strange because if I own a property and I want to paint it a certain way, I should be allowed to paint it. I respect it if it's, um, if it's heritage listed building, but if it's a brand new building, let me do what I want to do to, to add flavour to the community, yeah. I don't look into it deep enough with local council, but it's local government, so there's always low-level corruption where they favour certain people to paint things over other people, maybe, but I guess censorship, yeah, look, they, they probably don't want to see anything that's, that could be politically motivated or racist or sexist painted out on the streets, I'm sure, but, you know, you're painting letters, you're painting letters, you're painting traditional graffiti, you know. I guess, there's, especially there's like a young generation that will come, that are coming through and they just want to put up their name, so they'll go over anything. Even if it's like a street art mural painted by a graffiti writer, they'll still go through and cap it which is interesting I, I think the fight shouldn't be against within the writers it should be against the system it should be against um, corporate advertisers that just take away from street art graffiti and they'll come in and they'll put all their posters straight over graffiti and start making money off property whereas before there used to be um, a graffiti art mural there for 10 years and now all of a sudden there's a huge billboard. That's where the battle is, not, not within graffiti. It should be against these higher things that are against us. And it's interesting because there'll always be, it's almost like a, a battle between youth and, and older writers. And a lot of those older writers have paid their dues, their respect, their They've paved their way being illegal writers and they're at a point in their life where they've made a turning point and they're making money through art and they're getting disrespected for that. And unfortunately, some of those people that are doing that and disrespecting these older artists, they don't understand the full picture because at some point they might get to that, that point in their life and then go, oh shit, man, you know. It, it does happen. I think it's, in Melbourne particularly from what I, I've seen, it's done with respect to be inclusive of street graffiti artists to exhibit somewhere where they'll get paid. Um, and a lot of the smaller galleries are owned by people that have come from within a graffiti art background as well. So it's this thing of building a community and people growing to then support people that might still be living, you know, like traditional and just doing illegal graffiti or for artists that, you know, want to explore and do more. So um, that said, there is another side where it is commercial interests. Um, I won't say exploiting, but sometimes encouraging, sometimes exploiting graffiti art for their benefit to make them look cool. But then the artist gets paid a lot of money, so if, if they get paid for painting their art, it depends what you think's right, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's pretty big in Melbourne. They call it the graffiti art capital, but 
people in other states will then argue because the tri um, there's so much history in in Sydney, in Adelaide, Perth, in, in all the major cities, you know. So, but it, it's a pretty strong community and there's a lot of graffiti art throughout Melbourne. If I start name, if I name one person, I'll forget <laughs> someone and then I'll get a phone call, people saying, you didn't say my name or and just call, you know. There, there's more than enough artists known um, for, for paving the way here in Melbourne and have made, you know, um, their impact in Europe and America as well. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of information out there about those people. I, I think in the early stages of graffiti art in Australia, we obviously took from New York, um, but then artists were able to take that and create their own style. Artists were then influencing each other within their own neighborhood on what train line they were living on and that created a Melbourne style or Adelaide style, Sydney mm -hmm. style. And that was really flourishing, I think, in the 80s and early 90s. Everything changed with magazines and, the, and then the internet generation. Whereas now, an artist, a young artist based in Melbourne is no longer just looking at what happens along the train lines and the laneways in their city. They're immediately influenced by what they see on the internet and they can go, oh, okay, I like this artist, they're from Germany, and then base everything they do on that mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. um, so I think style has obviously become a global thing now where you're no longer influenced by your neighborhood, you're influenced by people around the world. I guess graffiti art has become so diverse, it's almost like when it originally started, we were sold the whole four element Thing, you know, graffiti, break dancing, and DJ and rap music. But when we did our research, we sort of realized that graffiti was born before hip hop culture. It just became heavily adapted into hip hop. So there still is a strong connection within hip hop culture, but you'd be silly to think that it, it solely exists within hip hop. An artist is an artist. What music they choose to like is their thing. So you know, they'll bring those influences in with their art, be it, be it rock music, punk, you know, dance music, trance, whatever. So, yeah. And that, that will always be graffiti, but then I guess there's this other thing they call street art, yeah. and that's the commercialization of traditional graffiti and just the use of a spray can to put art on a surface is street art, and that's where it becomes commercial. Um, you know, graffiti has always been plagiarized and stolen from by mass media advertising agencies and they'll use it when it benefits them to sell a product, but at the same time they'll turn around and condemn illegal graffiti. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, when it's at its base roots, it's, it's at its rawest and its best. I, I, I think it's, it's, whether it's improvement, but it's definitely um, made things diverse. I think the whole hypocrisy about graffiti is that to be in graffiti, you have to live by these certain rules in a box. But at the same time, we want you to break those rules. So as soon as you start breaking the rules, which is what graffiti is also about, some graffiti artists will get criticized, condemned, brought down, oh, you've sold out, you've done this. Oh, why are you building sculptures? Why are you doing 3D art? Why are you doing digital art? It's like, if you're an artist, you should be able to explore and go where your creativity takes you. I, I think it is fairly male dominated, but there is a strong contingency of young women coming through and really getting into it, which is really good. Um, and you know, and that, be that, you know, girls that come through and, and I know that it's a street bombing or doing that element and then there's, you know, doing more legal stuff. It's it's good to have people involved. Yeah. Geez, probably in the thousands, maybe. Yeah, if you're looking at the greatest city of Melbourne, the north side, south side, you know, there's been so much tradition and um, so many crews, you know, enriched in the culture here in Melbourne that it just keeps growing. And what else is important is the people that 
come through and support graffiti art, the people that will buy the artwork, or the people that turn around and allow a crew to paint a wall in their neighbourhood. You know, that's just as important as the people painting it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Young, angry men, angry girls, making their mark in society. That's that raw element of what really drives the culture. And then maybe not, they're not always angry, they're just very passionate, yeah. Graffiti's for the people, by the people, you know? Um, yeah, and, and graffiti art shouldn't battle other street artists and whatever, it's like I said, there's systems and other things higher and above us that you should take the battle to, not destroy within the scene. So that's just me though. He's um, a Melbourne based artist, um, Balaclava to be exact was his hood. He was a very, very active street bomber. He, he really pushed his name in a lot of different ways in Melbourne with his crews, MC and DB. Um, and unfortunately, through his spirit of adventure and risk taking, um, uh, passed away five years ago through a train surfing accident. Um, his energy and passion still lives through his crew and his family and Melbourne graffiti art. And it is not uncommon to see his name um, being put up throughout Melbourne till this day. Um, yeah. He was one of those people that, would, that was very traditional in street bombing, doing pieces. He just did what he wanted to do. And he got his name out there and, um, you know, he was, he was doing tech, he was using techniques to execute graffiti before it became common knowledge or, you know, before people just researched things on the internet. Um, he really pushed, you know, street bombing in Melbourne on, on a bigger scale. So, you know.